أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد Beloved brothers and sisters we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for giving us this opportunity to be here today we praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى who created us who provides everything for us who has given us much more than we deserve and at the same time, we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one who was sent to us with all this goodness that we have. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all his companions, his household, and every one of us. Inshallah, today I would like to speak on a beautiful topic connected to the youth. And that is a topic that I have entitled, We Can Do Better. Every one of us grows as the days pass. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'a. It is Allah who took you out of the wombs of your mothers and you knew nothing. When we were born, did we suddenly come out and say, Salaamu alaykum, I'm here. Is that what happened? No, it didn't. When we were born, we didn't even make a noise besides crying at a certain stage. It was just crying. It's just the miracle of Isa or Jesus, may peace be upon him, where when he was born, he actually spoke, Inni Abdullah, I am the worshipper of Allah. And you know that that is mentioned in Surah Maryam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide those who have the incorrect belief about Jesus, may peace be upon him, to that which is correct. Amen. So when we were born, we came to this world without really knowing how to speak. There was no sound that was made besides that which did not make sense. But do you know what? A mother who is experienced would be able to differentiate between the cry of a child. So the mother will say, this cry is for hunger. This cry is because the child is perhaps wet. This, this cry is because the child is tired. And this cry, I don't know, I'm worried. Let's go to the doctor. Subhanallah. So this was a gift of Allah and it still continues to be a gift. But as we grew older, we began to say a few words. Why? Because Allah has put within us the development to a degree that he created us from weakness. And slowly we worked up to the point of strength. When we hit the peak, in certain ways, we start slowing down once again. And this brings us to another verse of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah الذي خلقكم من ضعف ثم جعل من بعد ضعف قوة ثم جعل من بعد قوة ضعفا وشيبة. Allah says, It is Allah who has created you in a condition of weakness and from that weakness he has brought you up to strength and after that strength he has then taken you downwards to weakness and gray hair weakness and gray hair something amazing is when you are young and you are perhaps an infant you are weak you depend on people to do your things and the people around you do it happily the parents will take you to the doctors happily if you happen to be sick. They will carry you. They will lift you. They will perhaps move you from point A to point B. They will feed you. They will change your nappies. Everything happens happily and every day the one who did all this for you will keep on telling, will keep on asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, grant this child of mine good health. Grant this child long life. Let the child this and let the child that. And do you know when you grow very old, what might happen? May Allah protect us all. 
we become dependent on someone once again maybe it's the same child that we looked after when they were little kids and now when we are old they feel lazy to look after us so they say oh I took my dad to the hospital oh I, I, I've been holding my mother I carried my mother I fed I did this and I did that so many different things and at the end of the day in the heart one asks a question when is this going to end Allahu Akbar may Allah safeguard us I hope it doesn't happen to us but people have said you know what shaitan does come in and says you know how long am I going to carry on with this paralyzed mother of mine may Allah protect us all so the, the, the issue the point I'm raising two things one is the lesson we have to learn from the verse obviously because we read it and two is the fact that we grow to a peak and at the peak after a certain point we start dropping in certain ways when I say certain ways I mean physically physically more than anything else and subhanallah it's 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 a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has kept us so beautifully that as we're young and we're growing we learn more every day that's a gift of Allah what does this mean you know when you go to school when you go to school subhanallah you learn right at the beginning a b c or alif ba ta and so on when you get to the next year you build on what you learned the first year and then the third year you build on what you learned the second year so if you know one plus one and you learned that the answer is two that will help you right up to the end of your life it's not like okay one plus one was something we learned in grade one forget about it now now if someone asks you what's one plus one just tell them i don't know no it's not a silly question. It is something that you will need to know all along. So we develop and we grow and there is room for improvement and everything we do, we can do better. So as a Muslim, where do we start? Today we're talking to youth, mashallah. Mashallah. The youth, where do you start? What can you do better in? Point number one, your link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can do better. You can do better. You can improve on your link with Allah. I tell you why. Our driving force as Muslimin is the fact that we believe. The others don't believe. They do what they want. Their first point of improvement is perhaps how much money they can earn. So that's their first point of, of improvement. But with us as Muslimin, our first point of improvement is my link with Allah can be better. Every one of us, myself included, my link with Allah can be better. Do you read your five salah? If you do, on what time do you read your five salah? You can improve on the time. If you don't read your five salah, oh, that is something dangerous. You have to do something about it. I tell you why. Belief makes us understand why we are in the world. If I were to ask you, why are you in this world? What would you say? Let's see what you say here. Can some of the guys answer me? Why are you in this world? What is the reason? Everyone says to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Correct. Because Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقُتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind or jinn kind except that they worship me. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained what is this worship. He explained. Worship in a nutshell is to lead your life in such a way that all of it is a preparation for the day you will meet with Allah. That's what it is. That's, that's the meaning. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would mean to lead your life in such a way that you are preparing in the best possible way to meet with Allah. So istighfar is part of ibadah. Worshipping Allah alone is the primary item that we look at. To do the acts of worship in accordance with what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught is something of prime importance. But what you need to know is from the point of birth right up to the point of death I must be conscious of the fact that I don't know when I'm going to die I have no clue this might be your last few moments it might be my last few moments I don't know so if I were to die now and say I meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what will I say I said you know what we were having fun I just went to school I learned I was about to qualify I was going to do this but then you took me away that's not good enough it's not a good enough answer he said, you know what, I was, I really, I was earning a salary and I earned so much and I got a promotion and I earned much more and I bought a car and a house and I was so happy and I married the most pretty girl on, on, on the face of the globe and you know what, we were about to have kids and then you took me away. All these answers are material answers. The proper answer is, Ya Allah, whatever opportunity you gave me, 
I seized it to develop a link with you. Forgive me wherever I have faltered. I tried my best. This is the link. And this is why I say we can do better with our link with Allah because we don't know when we are going. That's the difference. A lot of people running behind materialism. Let me tell you, your test is, your test is whilst you are in the world, look at what is happening to others and learn a lesson for yourself. Let me give you an example. There are so many people out there. They were born, they lived, they died. What did they achieve? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But the world says this person was very successful. Why? Because he was, by the time he died, he was the CEO of a multi-million dollar company. Wow, he did so well in his life. Let's be honest. Is that called doing well, the, uh, doing well in your life? Now what will happen to him? He died. He did not develop his link with Allah. So Allah sends us to the world for an examination and then he takes us out once the examination is over. He sends us in the world for an examination and he takes us out. You are here and soon you will be out. There are others who came in and they are out. There are some who are still waiting to come in and then they will come out. Short period of time. Listen carefully. What I'm saying is very, very serious. You have a short space of time to pass an examination and walk out. You have a very short space of time to pass your examination and to walk out. What is the exam? The exam is Allah has put obstacles in your path. Watch out. Be careful for them. You know, a lot of the youngsters like to play games. I don't know. Do you know what is the PSP 3 and PSP 4 and so on? I'm sure you're aware of it. I see the smile. So we're shy to say, yes, I know. But anyway, I know you know. So you have all these games that you play. When you play a game, say, for example, it's an ordinary game that a person might be playing. Uh, and say uh, f racing cars, okay? So as you're racing, there are obstacles. They can never ever have a game that is just a straight road. You just have to press the accelerator and switch off and they see who did the best. There's no game like that. That's boring. They have to have bends and turns and potholes and obstacles and something to do with something else. You must avoid hitting here and then you must go as fast as you can and you do this so that you can finish and you have protected yourself from the obstacles and you were at the finish line first. Am I right? So say you were at the finish line number 10. What will you do? Let me see if some of the youngsters know the answer here. If, for example, you played a game for the first time and you finished off number 10, what, what are you going to do? Start again. Exactly what I wanted to hear. You're going to try again. Why? Because now you want to do a bit better. A bit better. So I tell you, in life, life is a test. It's not a game. It's reality. So Allah says, look, you die once, there's no coming back. There's no coming back. But we do you a favor. When you realize that you're coming out second and third, there is something known as tawbah. Turn back to us. We will, come, we will let you come out first. Are you following the point? But you remember your... Like I say, your life is such, you, there will be obstacles. There will be a beautiful car dangling in the front. And you know what? You've got half the money to, earn the, to, to buy the vehicle. You don't have the other half. Now, it is a test of Allah. Are you going to do something haram to get that car? Number one. Number two is, is that car your main focus in life? Very important. Is that car your main focus in life? If it is, you might achieve it. Then when you die, what will happen? Then nobody's going to bury that Lamborghini with you in your grave to say, wow, big achievement. Here it is. Bury this man. That's not going to happen. So understand that with the link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the most important things is to know that there are so many tests that I need to understand. Stay away from haram. You know, zina or adultery is very easily committable depending on the environment you're staying in. The winner is he who protects, she who protects himself or herself from it. The reason is, and when we talk of zina, for those who don't know the, English, the Arabic language who might be listening to us, we're talking here of adultery. For example, it's just cited as an example. So to stay away from it, you would be protecting your wheels from hitting a pothole. Imagine you're driving and you are in this race and you see a huge pothole and you say, let's see if this car can take it. Aren't you a fool? Aren't you a big fool? Because you know that those big magnums, you know those wheels, the alloy wheels, they, they cannot take even the slightest of a pothole. In my part of the world, they call it buckling the wheel, which means that rim would actually get bent in such a way that you have to take all four out because you cannot have three that look the same and then one suddenly is a biscuit tire or it is something totally different. No, you change all of them or you repair the one if you can. So the point being raised is when you see haram in your path, 
consider it an opportunity to get closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by staying away. So when you see something that you're not supposed to look at, to lower your gaze for the sake of Allah, you should be happy to say, Ya Allah, I'm passing my test here. Subhanallah. Time for salah, you're so lazy and you, you, you just get up and you say, you know what, no matter what, I'm sitting and I'm not going to move until I get out of my bed and I go and read my salah. You say, Ya Allah, I thank you for helping me pass the test. As cozy as the bed was because of the air condition or because of whatever else. And as tired as I was, I got up because of you. This might be the last Salatul Fajr that I will ever read. Could be. Then if you die, you're such a happy person. Imagine. Allahu Akbar. So why we say you can do better is because as time passes, we have more and more obstacles. You know, when a person grows older, they get a family. Family comes with many more responsibilities. You spend time with your children, your family. You need to earn. And this test of the world is such that Allah has kept in it things that are beautiful for you to go and achieve. So sometimes people will, uh, for example, you know, you're living, you grow up, you get your first job and your first pay packet, first salary. I'm sure a lot of you who are working, you remember the first time you got an amount of money. This is your money. And you looked at it. I hope you said Alhamdulillah. But sometimes people just look at it. Wow. Now I can go and buy this. I can do this. I can do that. Whereas other people are thinking, let me save up as much as I can. One day I need to get married. And one day I need to have children. Look, Allah puts it in your sensible mind to say, one day you will get married and you will have children. Do you know why? It's your duty to have those children to pass the baton on so that the next generation can be prepared through you. So life is not all about you, you and you. It is about you, yes. But your link with Allah in such a way that you prepare the next generation for having the same or a better link with Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why those fathers who did not used to be religious and they became religious and then they have children, they will always tell you, I want my son to be a half. But they are not half. Why? Because they say we have earned the world. I know of business people who were away from the deen. When they came to the deen and they started reading their salah and so on, and then they had children, they started saying, you know what? Don't worry, my son, don't worry about money. We've got the money. You worry about your link with Allah. I want you to become a hafiz. I want you to learn the deen. I want you to be a da'i. I want you to uh, do this and to do that. All this is part and parcel of your test from Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we need to know it's not good enough to only worry about the children when we are not worried about ourselves. This is something that is extremely important. So going back to the first point that I was raising, and that is we can do better when it comes to our link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My way of looking at this is to constantly remind yourself that you are in a test. It is a very temporary test. Everything you are doing, it's a temporary test. You have your beautiful phones, your beautiful watches, your nice clothes, beautiful perfume, whatever else you have, mashallah. All this is zinatul hayat in dunya. All this is part of the beautification of the world. It is not the aim of your existence here, but it is by the way. By the way, your aim is to earn the pleasure of Allah. And you need to make sure every day you learn more, you put more into practice. You do not miss that which is compulsory and obligatory upon you. Some of us, we earn wealth and we don't pay zakat because we think, you know what? Uh, it's, I'm not yet ready. I know of people who've told me I've had money for the last 20 years. I haven't paid zakat. I just used to give a few charities here. Why? This is a test of Allah. He gives you a thousand riyal and he tells you, you know what? I only need a little small percentage back. Very small. Let's see if you can give it. Imagine you are begging to someone, a beggar, and you are begging to someone, and you happen to say, give me $5 or $10 or real. Let's use the term real. Give me 100 real. He gives you 105. And he tells you, now that you have 105, give me back five. And you say, I don't want. Come on. Allahu Akbar. Who gave it to you? He gave you more than you asked for. And he's telling you, give me back the five. And not even five. To be honest with you, the percentage in most cases is smaller than that. When I say most cases, there are a few exceptions where when it comes to farming and when it comes to mining and so on, the percentage is slightly bigger. But Allah is asking you to give some back. And sometimes we find ourselves dilly-dallying. So my brothers and sisters, remember one thing. Your link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something amazing. It is unique. Always develop it because when you die, don't you want to die at a time when your link with Allah is at the best possible level? You know, a friend of mine lost his child. 
two weeks ago. May Allah grant her Jannah. And I spoke to the friend and I told him, you know, I know your daughter, not directly, but from what we hear. And aren't you happy at the fact that her life moved in such a way that the time she died, from what we understood, she had a much better link with Allah than all of the previous days, which means she had, she was at the best possible position up to that time to have gone. And wallahi, the man nodded his head. Now, good news for such a person. When you die and when I die, and we have to talk about death. You know, some people don't like the topic, death. The minute you say death, they say, oh, this guy is one of them again. You know, the minute you say, you've got to die, they say, oh. but that's the only real thing. It's the only real topic you can actually talk about. So, so what happened is, with me and you, if we are getting closer and closer and closer to Allah, and one of the days we die, we would be the closest we ever were to Allah than in the past. This is what is meant by, you can do better. Do better every single day. This is why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say that bad news to the one whom his two days are equal. Imagine, your, two, your yesterday and your today are equal in terms of spirituality and achievement. It's the same. And bad news to you, good news to he whose two days are not the same. Today is better than yesterday. So there are three types of people. One, those whom today is worse than yesterday. That is destruction. The other is those whom yesterday and today are the same. That is bad news because you can do better. That's our topic. And the one who is successful is he whom yesterday and today Today is such that it's much better than yesterday. And this is common logic. Before I move on to the next uh, point of this particular subject, I want to tell you that Allah has kept it such in man, that man will never be satisfied totally in terms of materialistic achievement. No matter what he gets, he'll always want more. If the son of Adam had two valleys full of gold, he would want another one. So that's just the system of nature. It's a system of, should I say, contaminated nature, if we can even use that word. What that means is, say for example, you are working, right? If you are working and your salary is uh, 10,000 riyal, uh, decent, I think that's a decent salary. Uh, after some time you want 12, the next following year, you want it to be 15. You are working young post, you want a promotion. If your salary is the same, there will come a time when you get bored. And if your salary is going down, I think you'll quit your job and find another one. Right? Your salary is going down. You quit your job, you say, I need another job. And if you're getting a promotion, and if you're earning more and more, you're happy. Remember, for us, the test is that must happen, but with our link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Link with Allah. What is your link with Allah? Come on, we can do better. We can be the best of people. Fulfill your obligations unto Allah and abstain from the prohibitions. Never ever render a single act of worship to anyone besides Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that is like a major volcano that erupts in the middle of the street. That's what it's like. You know, you have beautiful car, beautiful street, beautiful everything. And suddenly, big volcano, everything is gone. That is shirk. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what a powerful verse directed at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if you are to engage in shirk your deeds will be wasted and you will be from amongst the losers Allahu Akbar he was never going to do that but look the message is directed to him and obviously common logic it is directed to all of us as well may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness what else can I do much better in? We said the link with Allah. The second point, and I must raise this, and I will not dwell on it too long, is your link with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The reason is, he is the Nabi that was sent to us. We believe he is the best of them, the highest of them, and we respect him and love him to the highest degree. And we believe that the love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is displayed by actions and not merely and only by words. So words are there, yes, you read your salah ala Nabi sallallahu and so many other words of praise and so on. But just words of praise is not enough. You know, if a person says, I really, I respect you. And then whilst they're hugging you, they take a knife and they, they stab you at the back. Is that respect? Is that love? Is that care? If someone says, oh, this person is a wonderful person and they go behind the scenes and they're doing everything against what you said. What wonderfulness is that? 
So this is why we believe that we can do better with our link with Muhammad Sallallahu by learning what he taught. Learn the seerah. The seerah is, when we talk of seerah, generally we are talking of uh, the life of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Starting from just prior to his birth, right up to the point where he passed away Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we learn all of that with the idea of looking at what he went through for, for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to convey the deen to us. It was done to convey it to us. So it's for us, sake of Allah, but for us in the sense that to pass the message to us. So how much are we prepared to sacrifice? How much do we learn from that? Just his life story. And number two is something known as the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And that is the statements. And the hadith obviously goes into much more than just the mere statements. It even goes into his confirmations. And it goes into uh, various qualities of his and so on. What do we learn from his instructions, from the hadith? We will never be able to learn if we don't even know the hadith. We have not made an effort to learn it. You know, the link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there each one of us needs to also do something about his link with the Quran. And the link with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, each one of us needs to do better when it comes to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Have you learned it? Have you understood it? Have you tried to memorize even a few? Will you be able to quote 40 hadith for me here and now? And if not for me, then at least for your own self. Do you know a minimum of 40 hadith off by heart? The reality is a lot of us don't. Am I right? We cannot. Come on, you love the man. You want his shafa'a and intercession on the day of Qiyamah. We ask Allah to give it to us. It's definitely something that is mentioned in the ahadith that Rasulullah will be granted a special shafa'a, a special intercession and so on. So what we need to know is you will only deserve it if you have taken a keen interest in the message that the man brought. So we can do better by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can definitely do better by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's move on. If you take a look at the link with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it will automatically encompass the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what they went through and their lives, who they were and their names. You know, speaking to the youth, today we have an issue where people are being distracted by sport. Now, sports is something very important where you need to keep fit. You need to perhaps something recreational once in a while. We will not say that it's haram completely, but how you treat it, your treatment of it can become prohibited. Because if it is going to distract you from your salah, from your obligations unto Allah, if it is going to become an issue that becomes your main aim in life and so on, then the ruling changes. But the point I want to raise is as much as it is important for us to be fit and to be able to also have a bit of recreational time and mix and interact in that particular way, we must know that the importance given to it is a test for us. How much importance do you give Allah and His Rasul and the companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And how much of importance do you give the football stars and the, possibly the golf stars and various other, the cricket stars and so on that might be living in our times or before? So if you were to be able to name for me, I think football is quite big, am I right? Football is big. Is football bigger than cricket here or is cricket bigger than football? Football, football. okay, there you are. Football is quite big. So if you were to be able to name me 10 of the top footballers, your favorite, I think you, as a result, you should be able to name 20 of the top Sahaba as well, radiallahu anhu. It's only fair. It's a balance. So nobody said to know Beckham and his whole life history is wrong. But if it's done as a primary duty that you felt towards someone that perhaps was important, you need to know that what is primary is actually the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his life story. Sometimes we do not know the details of his own life that, than we do the details of the lives of the others. So remember this, something very important. You can do better, but you need to pick up a book. If you want to do better, you need to fight laziness. Laziness is something that will really destroy you. If you're lazy, your day will go by and tomorrow you say, okay, I will do this. And you say, Bukra, tomorrow. That's not good enough. Today, it must happen here and it must happen now. 
So do not leave what you can do today for tomorrow. That is the rule if you want to achieve in life. Never ever. No matter what the environment might train you to become, don't allow negative training. No. You do that which is correct. And I'm sure today when we talk of human resources and we talk of human resource development and so on, when we talk of training of the staff of any uh, multinational uh, you know, corporation or any company and so on, we talk of eradication of laziness. Don't wait for tomorrow. F you must fight your laziness because all you have is your moment now. That's all. What happened yesterday, gone. What is going to come tomorrow, tomorrow you might never see it. But right now, you can do something. So start getting up and doing something. This is why Muhammad وسلم, said in one hadith that if you have a seed that you want to sow and Qiyamah happens to come, try to sow that seed. You rather die in that condition whilst you're sowing the seed. Why? Don't say, oh, Qiyamah is here. Let me put the seed aside and wait and see what's going on. No, 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 no. May Allah safeguard us. Obviously, this, the, the hadith is speaking about uh, the, the, how much, how keen we should be to get good done. Do it ASAP. You don't know. You know, you've got something you want to give out in Sadaqah. Do it today. Do it now. Do it as best as you can. Because we don't want to uh, delay in such a way that we do not end up doing it. If I die, at least I know I finished do whatever I could by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to, to, in order to be able to do better, we have to fight laziness. Okay. What are the other points that we can do better in? We can do better in our relationships with one another. With one another. And what this means primarily when I meet you, Assalamu alaikum, how are you my brother? You are either my brother in Islam or you are my brother or sister in humanity. And if you are my brother or sister in Islam, there are so many rights that I owe you and you owe me. And if you are my brother or sister in humanity, there are still rights that I owe you and you owe me. Primarily, you can do better in your character. Your character, how you talk to others. Look, if I were to meet you, for whatever reason, I need to ask myself, when I leave you, what have I left you with? Is it anything positive? Is it something you achieved from? If not, I can do better. So if I meet you and I start swearing and I start screaming and I start yelling, that's not good enough. Change that. Change that. But if I meet you and I am a person who spoke to you very well, I left you with a good warm heart, you became a happy person, positive energies, I gave you some hope, I tried to speak to you nicely, and I, even though I was a little bit tired, I might have been a little bit sick, but the way I spoke to you, you actually felt welcome, you felt important and so on, that is what is supposed to be achieved. And you got a good message. A good message of what? A reminder. Some people just by greeting them, you are reminded of Allah. Do you know that? Some people just by mixing with them, you are reminded of your duty as a Muslim. And the brother says, you know what, my brother, I just need to pray. Give me two minutes. And you're sitting together. By right, you should say, brother, it's time for prayer. Let's go and pray. I know in this country, you can do that very easily. And even in other places, you could. But sometimes people will say, hey, I'm not ready to pray. I've, it's happened to me where I asked a, a certain brother. I said, you know what, you, uh, should, isn't it time for prayer? Let's, he says, I'm not yet ready. You're not, are, you, are you excused or something? I thought that was only for women. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us, really. It's something that we need to understand. When you meet a person, it, the interaction should be so positive that we should never ever be losing an opportunity to have a positive impact on someone. Never lose the opportunity. Now, sometimes, and there is a sickness that occurs, people are very good to strangers, but their own people, they are bad to them. So you are a kind person, you smile to everyone, but get home and your wife is so scared. She's hoping that you didn't come because she says, as soon as this man comes, there is a disaster. Where's my food? Why are these kids awake? They're supposed to be sleeping. They're disturbing. These type of statements happen. Believe me, there are people like this. We go home instead of entering the door with a broad smile and bringing calmness to the home. We will bring so much of terror to the home where you come in and everything is war. May Allah protect us. That should not happen. You can do better. Your relation with your family, your spouse, your wife, your husband, whoever it is, your children, your parents, you can do much better. But you need to fight what is known as your nafs. You know what is the nafs? Your soul, your inner being. You need to fight it in order to become better. Don't think that it's just going to come like a date. 
You know where you, you, it, you, have a, you have a medication, you eat a tablet, and next thing I'm a very nice person. لا تحسب المجد تمرا أنت آكله There is an Arabic saying which says, do not think that the height or success is just like a date. You eat it, and next thing you, you will be successful. It's not a date. You will achieve something only by working very, very hard in that direction. So if you want to be a better person to your wife, go home and fight yourself to smile at her, to say good words, to tell her how much you love her. Today, you know, I always say the term, I love you. There's so much we can learn from it. So much we can learn from it. Because a lot of the times people who say I love you, they don't actually mean it. It's just a word. It's just a word. And then people say, really? Allahu Akbar. <laughs> so, so it's something that's unique because if you look at it, the words, if they come from the right person to the right person, they mean a lot. When they come from the wrong person to the wrong person, they mean nothing. They actually mean zero. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us love for His sake. And this is why, like I say, we can do better even with our children. I know we're speaking to youth, but there are those who have children who are listening to me. And believe me, you can do better. The amount of time you spend with them, the guidance. Remember what we said at the beginning of this talk. You have to pass the baton on to the next generation. You will become old. Yesterday when I flew into Dammam, I saw an elderly man who was being pushed by another elderly man. And the other elderly man happened to be his son. So they were both elderly. So the father must have been in his 90s and the son must have been in his 60s or 70s because it looked like he must have had children quite early. And he refused for a worker to push that wheelchair. You know, the airline normally has a worker who will push the wheelchair. The man says, no, let me push. And I looked at him. I didn't say anything, but I understood what he is trying to do. He says, my father, this is an opportunity for me to push him. Why must I let someone else push him whilst I'm here and I'm alive? I am here. Why must this happen? So he says, you walk, I will push. And I was, it moved me to say, subhanAllah, ya Allah, help us all. Either we don't get to that age. You know, it's not easy to say I mean to that because everyone wants to live very long. You know, but believe me, the best death is when you die whilst you are still a bit healthy. You know, whilst you, you, people have, you haven't become a burden on someone because, you know, when you become a burden on someone, it's a test for them, but it's a test for you too. It is very irritating. I have spoken to some elderly people who need help even to get a small bottle like this from the corner there. They need help. And they say there was a day when I was the strongest in the whole club and I was powerful. Now today I can't even move my hand. But that's a gift of Allah because you prepare to meet with Him. But it's an irritation because no matter what you want to do, you are dependent on someone. And it's a test for those people to say, are you going to help? If you help, Allah will assist you. But remember, passing the baton on to the next generation will only happen if you have the time. And if you are going to use whatever Allah has blessed you with in order to help them and guide them to say, look, son, one day I will not be here. You know what you need to do? You need to make sure you do not miss a salah. When you work, work honestly. Do not be tempted by corruption. Today, corruption is very easy. Anywhere you go on the globe, there are people who are corrupt. Why? Because the baton has not been passed on properly. Or sometimes the baton was passed on, meaning from, from parents coming down. Sometimes it was passed on. But remember the way the fitna and the tests and tribulations is advertised today is very, very vigorous. Very strong. Everywhere you go, there's an advert. Advertising what? A woman. Advertising something material, a motor vehicle. For this. Look at the billboards anywhere in the world. What do they advertise? There are very few countries, and mashallah, this country, Saudi Arabia, is one of them where you find them advertising the Quran, advertising a dua. I know when I was young, up to today, you're traveling on the highway, sometimes you see, La tansa dhikrallah. I'm sure you've seen that, isn't it? They say, Subhanallah, billboard. Now in South Africa also we have a few of those billboards, mashallah, where they say Subhanallah and they have a translation in English. So it's there. But the point I'm raising is 99% of the billboards, you know, when I was younger, I'm going to tell you this, it's, it's actually quite funny. Uh, I, I, I drove, or we were driving from Mecca to Jidda, and there was a huge billboard and there was a horse. And I had something, you know, with horses, we were always interested in mashallah horses and horse riding and so on. So there was a big horse and it said they sleep high. And I said, hey, this horse is called sleep high. You know, we were just, and I did not realize what they actually are advertising is a mattress. 
a mattress, sleep high, and they've got a horse on it. And I'm young, and I'm telling my father, I said, hey, they're advertising a horse here. And he started laughing. He says, they're advertising a mattress. And I said, but there's no sign of a mattress. He says, that's how they advertise it. It's like, for example, when they want to advertise, say, for example, uh, tires, you know, Pirelli or Bridgestone or something, in some countries, they will have a woman. And there, there is no tire there. They just got a woman smiling, and they got at the bottom, it says Bridgestone. Come on. You know? Someone who wants to look up that woman might Google Bridgestone and they'll only find the tires. They'll be wondering what's going on. May Allah safeguard us. So, the way the worldly items have been advertised and are marketed are very vigorous. So your test is far greater and your reward is bigger to be able to streamline your life in a way. Yes, you make use of the dunya, you make use of the material items, but only to bring you closer to Allah and to help you to fulfill your duty unto Allah. I had a case where there was a certain boy, 13 years old, he wrote me an email and he told me, you know what, my father's a very religious man and he told me that to go to a theme park is haram and to do this is haram and to go to the park is haram and to go out for this is haram and that's haram. And he says, now, you know, I'm cooked up in the house I don't know what to do please can you help me so it so happened that I knew the man's father the, the boy's father and uh, when I met him I told him I said you know what do me a favor uh, in this world all these items that are available it depends how you use them that makes them either haram or that keeps them within the confines of halal so say for example there is a theme park Theme park meaning, you know, you have rides and maybe a roller coaster and a big wheel and something else. Now, one might say, okay, to go there is haram. The reality is no. If you are there whole day, every day, all the time, no salah, no nothing, you are mixing with freely with the other sexes and so on, or with the opposite sex and what have you. The truth is, that is when the way you are going there is what says what you are doing is wrong. The facility is available. But if you happen to go there once in a while for a fixed period of time, bearing in mind your dress code, your, your, your duty unto Allah, salah time, you stop what you are doing, you fulfill your salah, you eat only that which is halal and so on. What's wrong? You need recreation once in a while. Your children need it because they need to develop. And children, you know, it is nature that they will play. Muhammad sallallahu used to sometimes encourage the little children within certain limits to play. Ya Abba Umair, ma fa'ala nughayr. You know, there are so many different ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu where he would even joke with the uh, little children and he would spend a bit more time with them. And he, th sometimes they, they used to have the, some of the uh, Abyssinian slaves or the little boys who used to come in and they used to entertain by playing. But it was not every day and it was not whole day. It was very limited and it was part of recreation. So we need to understand and realize that we need to develop as much as we should be doing better in our link with Allah, link with Rasulullah the link we have with the rest of humanity at large, the link with our family members, our parents and so on. Remember to strike the correct balance. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us with this beautiful balance. So my brothers and sisters, we can do better in every single thing in our lives, no matter what it is. You know, for example, uh, today we are here, we are dressed. MashaAllah, the dress code is excellent, it's good. MashaAllah, well, how, you know, we can do better. How can we do better? Go back and check what are the confines of Islam when it comes to my dress code? What must my face be looking like? You know, what should I be looking like? And so on. And you know what? We can develop it. I, I won't mention specifics because there are too many things, but we can develop. If we talk to the sisters for a moment, one thing you need to know is, and as the sisters, we're talking to sisters, the development in dress code is a beautiful opportunity to get close to Allah. Beautiful chance. And every day we do better. The worst would be the one who goes backwards. You know what is, what, what is meant by going backwards? Say, let's take a look at the dress code. So you have a sister, mashallah, and she's put on her cloak and so on. And a day comes when that cloak is thrown away. But if you have another person who never wore the cloak and suddenly it comes in, we would say, my sister, I would rather encourage someone who's moving closer to Allah than someone who's actually going back. Be careful. See, the devil is there. There is always still a chance for as long as you have not died. This is why Rasulullah has told us, Inna Allah ta'ala yaqbilu tawbat al-abdi ma lam yugharghin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the repentance of a slave or a worshipper, meaning any one of us. 
Allah accepts our repentance for as long as that worshipper has not got to the point of gharghara. Gharghara is when your soul is being removed from the body, there is a certain point where it's actually coming out now and it's called the gharghara. Some of the scholars say when the soul has got right to the top here, where the, where the neck is roughly. And how exactly that happens, Allah knows best and we will all taste it one day. Because Allah says, Kullu nafs, Kullu nafsin da'iqatul maut. Every soul shall taste death. It's a taste. Every soul shall taste death. So when the gargara, when a person gets to that point of gargara, the door of repentance is closed, it's sealed. What this means is, you have a chance, you have a chance. When does the chance end? The point of gargara. At the point of gargara. Going back to our PlayStation games, you die once, you die twice, you die thrice. Then it says game over. It flashes, isn't it, on the screen. Am I right? Most of the time you have three lives. With us, like I told you, you have one life, but you have so many opportunities. You made a mistake, say, Ya Allah, forgive me. I admit my error. I regret it. I ask you to forgive me, and I promise you not to do it again. And Allah says, forgiven. Here you are, start a new slate. A person who has sought forgiveness from a sin is equivalent to the one who has no sin. And there is one beautiful condition that I always love to, to reiterate and repeat. And that is the mercy of Allah is so immense that Allah says, if you repent and after that you keep on doing good deeds, we will go back to the bad deeds that you did a long, long time ago and we will convert them into good and bring them back onto the scales. Allah speaks of so many sins and how bad they are and so on and how the people will be punished because of their sins then he says except for the one who repents and after that does good deeds. So there's two conditions. When you repent, your sins are forgiven. But if you repent and then you do so many good deeds, then Allah says, we won't only suffice by having forgiven your bad deeds. We will take them and convert them into good and put them onto the right side of the scale and here you go. Subhanallah, you have bonus, extra points. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that opportunity. So my brothers and sisters, we can do better. Keep telling yourself every day, in everything you do, you can do better. Even when you read your salah, you know what? We can do better in our concentration. And that concentration is a beautiful gift of Allah. You know, I was reading about meditation in the West. And what they say is, I was reading and to be honest with you, it's there. If you Google it and you check it out, you'll find it. They say, you know, at least thrice a day, it's very, very healthy to spend five minutes meditating. So what type of meditation? So they will tell you, you know, you, you actually concentrate. You can close your eyes and concentrate on your breathing. Concentrate on one thing for five minutes. And what it will do, it releases a lot of your stress and it helps you focus again in your work and so on. And I said, Ya Subhanallah, when we tell people to fulfill salah with khushu and concentration, they say, by the way. But you tell them to do this, they will do it quickly. Because why? Dr. Eddie from somewhere in the West has told you this. When Muhammad Sallallahu told you the other thing, you're not worried. But in the, behind the scenes, they looked at what Muhammad Sallallahu said and they modified it in a way that it does not seem like they got it from there, but they actually got it from there. That is salah, your gift and mine, five times a day. Do you know how beautiful it is on a hot day, you're working. And do you know what I read? They say during the morning, you, you, wouldn't, you, would, you would not need it that much. But because later on during the day, you've already been awake for so much, you would need to bring the, uh, you would need to bring the gap between the two points of meditation a little bit closer. And I said, that is amazing. That is amazing because research according to them is showing and proving to you that the gap between Asr and Maghrib and Maghrib and Isha is much smaller than the gap between Fajr and Dhuhr, subhanAllah. Allah. This is the beauty. That's why we say the gift we have. If they knew 
Firstly, if we fulfill it properly, that's when we will achieve the goodness of it. And that's why when you are reading salah, forget about everything else. It's you and Allah. Forget about everything. Your business can wait, your meetings can wait, everything can wait. Because if Allah wants, He can take you away there and then in such a way that that thing will delete itself. Your meetings will cancel, everything will go. This is something far more important. Your link with Allah, part of your core test. It's the main paper that you are writing in your exam is Salah. The main paper. You know, normally in Ikhtibarat, you have something known as, uh, in the examinations, you have something known as uh, orals. And then you have practicals. And then you have the written paper. A lot of the times they will tell you that the written paper is far more important. You know, the orals, okay, we can sort it out. We'll see, we can do it later. We can, but the written paper, you miss it, you're gone. So for us, the most important thing is salah. You can do better by concentrating. Bring back your concentration. So if you ask those gurus of breathing, they will tell you, whenever you lose your concentration, bring it back immediately. Bring it back immediately. Back onto what? Onto your breathing. That's what they say. And we have something higher than that. We tell you, bring it back unto the words of Allah. The highest thing you ever have. And that's why we say, my brothers and sisters, if you are reading salah, and I'm going to say this, we are sitting here in Dammam, at Dammam, and Saudi Arabia. If you are in this beautiful country, and you have not made an effort to learn the language of the Quran, you, you can do better. Let's word it that way. I've worded it lightly. You can do better. You will regret it. A day will come. Imagine the word of Allah. You don't know it. Come on, you can do better. You don't know the meaning of it. If you don't know the meaning of that, there's a problem. I don't want to say, put up your hands, who has a problem? I don't want to say that. Because I know a lot of people have a problem. The reason is, like I told you, the marketing of the worldly items is so vigorous, but the marketing of matters which are of the, of the core is not as vigorous. Yet that is the core. That's your test. Your test is when you see all the, the material items of the world being promoted in so many different ways through the whole media. How is it that you are going to protect yourself from all those potholes, so to speak, or obstacles, and you're still going to drive your vehicle, which is yourself, through the path in a way that you come out in one piece. By the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can do better. Bring yourself back to concentration. You know, when we are in ruku' what is the, one of the main du'as that we say? Subhana rabbi al azim. Am I right? One of the main supplications that is read, uh, read there when we are bowing, ruku' Some people do not know the meaning of that. And some people know the meaning, but they are not concentrating on it. So they say, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, Sami Allahu Liman Hamidah. You know the meaning, but you, you should have taken the bother of a few split seconds to think of it. That is when your salah will actually be much better. So, inshallah, we can do better.